Hello, in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about user input validation. So let's assume that we want to read some variables from the user, like an int, an ID. And for this, we need to read, so we have to have keyboard. So we create scanner object, new scanner, which is connected to the input, default input system.in. Of course, now Java will complain because scan is not defined, because it needs to be imported. So import java.util.scanner or just .star. So now we are able to, to read this. So id equal keep dot next int. So let's make some prompt here. System dot out dot print. Please enter your id. And once he enters, we can just print back whatever the user has entered. So print Alan, your ID is, then we print ID plus ID. So let's run this code now. So please enter your ID. So ID is one, two, three, and we got something wrong. What is wrong here? Because this one is not the right field so now it's working fine let's recompile it so please enter your id so one two three so the id was one two three but in most situations we'll have two issues the first one is that maybe the user will enter some number by mistake like this one so java will will cause will throw an exception of input mismatch because next int will only accept integer values what we have entered here is a floating point number, which is a double. So it has caused, next int has thrown exception of input mismatch. That's first situation you could encounter. The other situation, by mistake, you are entering an ID and without paying attention, you enter a character. So now it's gonna be a string. So again, next int will not accept this input because it's a string, it's not, it cannot be converted into an int, so it will cause, it will throw an exception of input mismatch. Cool, so now we need to do something about this. So to be able to do something about this, we have to, to get our input reading into a loop. So something like this, do while. So do while, keep doing the loop as long as something, so some situation is true. So we have, uh, input imp valid imp valid is a boolean variable that I'm going to create here so boolean imp valid that will tell me whether my input is valid so it's going to be true because we will keep reading like infinite so we have to do some conditions when we'll be able to stop doing the loop so we ask the user to enter in the loop now this loop will be infinite because it will be always true. Now we need to do some conditions when this field, Boolean field, will be converted into a false. So once we prompt the user, before reading, we check, we check the following thing. Is my keyboard bringing to me an int? So has next int. There is a method for that. So this is a Boolean method. It will tell you that your input is an end. It can be, in fact, it can be converted or passed into an end. So in this case, I'm going to read, I'm going to read whatever the user is giving me. Else, else, that means something is wrong. Something is wrong with my input. It could be a real number. It could be a, a series of characters. It could be a single character. So I should not accept this. So because I should not accept this, so I should flush it. So next means read it as a string and like we call it keyboard, we are flushing the keyboard, keyboard flushing. So we are getting rid of all this string, which is now in the keyboard buffer. So I'm flushing the keyboard buffer. So keyboard buffer is some memory uh, area where it stores anything that is entered from the keyboard. So you need to clear it because it's not what you want. And then you want to continue. You want to continue. Why continue? Because you want to skip whatever remaining in the loop and then you go back and you ask the user to re-enter the 
input. So now, if the reading is OK, that means I should set, at this point, I should set my input to false. Why to false? Because if I reach here, because remember, when the input is not a valid integer, the f will not be executed, and you go to the else. The else has two statements. We flush the keyboard buffer, we clear it, and then we continue. That means we skip whatever, whatever lines are after that, and we carry on. We go to the next iteration in the loop. So that's the meaning of continue. Continue means what? Skip the remaining lines of the loop block. The loop block. And repeat and repeat. Go back to the do. So let's see it now. Of course, now Java is complaining. Why? Because as you can see now, there might be a risk that this loop, of course, this loop is going to be executed at least once because it is a do while. It's not a while. A while the, the limit, the smallest number of repetition is zero, but a do while is always, we are always 100% certain that we are going to, to execute it at least once because the while is at the end of the loop block. So anyway, Java is complaining. So no harm to initialize it to a number which is like not acceptable. So there is no ID which is a negative number, right? So if I compile it now and run it, so it will ask me for what? For entering. So it's going to work fine. Now let's do it again. If I enter by mistake 1.2, it doesn't work. 1.2 doesn't work. Uh, some characters doesn't work. A12 doesn't work. Minus 12, it works because it's a number. Cool. Now, we know also that the ID is what? Is something that is within a range. So for example, let's say my ID is between, the range is, we are in 2020, so 2020, three zeros up to, 2020999. So in this case, I should make what? A condition. So I'm going to repeat the loop as long as the, the input is not valid or the input is less than the smallest number or the input is bigger than the largest number, which is 999. So these are the conditions that will cause my loop to be repeated. So do it again. So now if I enter one, two, three, it won't be accepted anymore because it's not within the range. So one, two, three, four, it won't be accepted. So 1.2, it won't be accepted. Minus two, it won't be accepted. Character won't be. Now if I do some number, it's gonna work. So now we are able to validate our input thanks to a simple trick, which is a do I loop and by checking that what is now entered by the user through the keyboard is a valid end. Otherwise, if it's not a valid end, double, real, character, string, whatever, you just ignore it. So ignore it, just read it as a line, as a string, and then you continue, you skip whatever you want. But if the reading is right, so no need to carry on, so break the loop. So the first condition is satisfied. We are reading really an integer. So we skip it, but now the other condition will be what? The range of, for example, the variable should be like this. And that would be for the user input validation. Thank you very much.